I'm telling you. This is Randy Davis with The Watchman. I don't even know what date it is. 2020 sucks. I don't think one day matters. I think we're we're like in the 57th day of November. But uh, welcome to The Watchman. This is going to be a, a good show. This is going to be an educational show. There's some that already hate it. But here's what we're going to do tonight, and we're going to do a, a kind of a simple thing. I'm going to tell you what we're going to tell you. Then we're going to tell you uh, what it is we're going to tell you. Then we're even going to test everybody. If anybody would like to call in, and believe me, I did talk to several people and got a lot of good information. But by the way, we've invited everybody involved. Of course, we couldn't involve. We couldn't invite Alec. We couldn't invite Neely, but all the rest that are involved in this or anybody who wants to trash talk me, hey, I'm going to let you come in here because this is going to be a little bit of a different thing. Yeah, it's always somber when anyone passes away, but having been on my deathbed last year while they trashed me, I don't have an issue. Uh, the Bible says, let the dead bury the dead. It's not that I don't have remorse. But if I could bring Chris back, I'd bring him back, but I can't. So I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to be a lot of factual information. It's going to be good. But unlike other programs you watch, I'm going to do my thing, and we're going to have fun with it because he's gone. He's just gone. And I don't know how to deal with any kind of stressful stuff like this any other way. It's so stupid, a lot of it, and so funny that you can't. But here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tell you what all we're going to do tonight. You'll hear a little bit of the history of us and why we have the passion for what we do. What makes us different in doing a live? We didn't do a live, even though we knew just as soon as anybody knew over a week ago. But we didn't go live then because we wanted to get everything together from our own records. And then, of course, Maria did her thing and got a lot of research out there. And we had lawyers reaching out to us. There'll be a lawyer involved uh, in in the uh, comments tonight, there'll be a lawyer that comes in a little bit later to explain some of the issues we're going to go over. And I'm sure there are going to be people out there, oh, God, they're a member of the bar. And that means that you're a vessel and dry dock or whatever it is. But we're going to tell you our personal reasons for being involved in this. We're going to go over a little bit of what makes this happen. What creates a scenario where people can exploit other people? Yeah. where people can lose their minds due to stress and the stress of being alienated from their children, the stress of continual hearings and legal issues. We're going to go over the, the Georgia event, and this is where, where a lot of things started, and this was in March of 2018 at Senator Nancy Schaefer's Memorial Rally. We're going to show some pictures from that. We're going to, we're going to go over... Um, some of the players that were there and we're going to go over what is called the justice league we'll be going over some of the justice league players a lot of these people i posted a picture up about the justice league and this was something that a certain advocate had created and a bunch of people participated in most of them want their faces off of there and we couldn't find a way to do it and still leave everything intact and i'm sorry and they wanted their pictures off of there because this particular person had it hurt them. They were basically conned into being on there. They, most of them shouldn't have anything about that reflect badly on them. I want to make sure everybody understands that. Then we're going to go over some court orders, court orders involving uh, Neely. Then we're going to go over the history behind Neely, including yeah. a ton of mug shots and other issues that, that, that we found, some on our own and some that were provided by attorney. Then we're going to go over some political issues. And, and believe it or not, there was politics involved. These people were invoking themselves in certain political aspirations and other people's political aspirations. We're going to go over that. Then we're going to go over what I call the shiny things. And the shiny things are going to be the different fraudulent snake oil charlatan bullshittery that these people create in order to keep your mind screwed up and keep you looking forward to the carrot that's dangling out in front of you and swapping it out when you think you're close they'll swap it out because you crash then we're going to go over a lot of the players and there's a lot of them 
and lay out what we know about them. After that, uh, we'll go over some of the victims and what happened to them. Some of the victims still don't care. They're victims that are stupid. And they, they like to continue to be victims. They enjoy apparently going to jail, having U.S. Marshals throw their stuff on the ground, bust in their houses. I don't know. And uh, once again, I want to say that I am sorry for the family. I'm sorry for Neely's family. I'm sorry for Hallett's family. And I don't know his family. But there's no easy way to to do this other than tell the truth. And unfortunately, that truth is not always pretty. And there'll be people say, well, you can't talk about a dead man. I can tell you, when I'm dead, you can say whatever you want about me. And I feel like this. I can talk about Hitler. I can talk, I can talk about uh, Jim Jones. I can talk about any of the cult leaders, Ted Bundy. I, I can talk about any of them. So in my opinion, this is for the public good, and it's not about personally doing anything, but you're going to see a lot of things that will let you know why we're passionate about this. There were personal implications in here. There was personal involvement. And to just give a little historical background here, this is not a situation where we went and scoured the internet, don't know what we're talking about. So as far as the history I mentioned earlier that we would go over, my personal history was I had no idea what could happen in family court or any other court uh, up until 2014, never had any involvement in court. And as of right now, I have not, I don't even have a parking ticket on my record. However, what had happened then is I had gotten involved in some Native American affairs and started looking for certain things and found them and then found a whole bunch of other fraud involving USDA, involving Nahasta, HUD, a lot of HUD money. And I went to a civitus meeting my brother and I did in 2012. And we met with Katie Pavlich, who is the townhall.com editor. And she's also a Fox News contributor. She's a very nice lady. James O'Keefe, who you recently are seeing now, and he's Project Veritas. And Project Veritas is putting videos out there showing the voter, uh, the, the, the voter ballot issues and recording. But those two are the ones who got me started. They, and, and by got me started, Katie Pavlich had given a meeting that day, and we asked to speak to her and show her evidence. She said, well, I only have a few minutes. I got to catch a flight. We said, okay. So my brother and I sat down with her. And before it was over with, we spent four hours with Katie Pavlov. And she looked at it all. And here's what she said to me. She said, and this didn't have anything to do with DSS, CPS. I didn't know who they were. She said, we're going to make you a writer. And I said, I'm not a writer. She said, you're a very good writer. You just don't know it. And they made me a writer with watchdogwire.com. Ann Kane was my editor. There's a ton of articles out there. You just don't know it was me. But the undercover video, the information, everything else. But Katie Pavlich warned me. She said, whenever you do this, they're going to retaliate against you. And I said, oh, I can handle the retaliation. I had no idea what I was in for. Once things started to bubble over, they came at me. There's nine cops in the middle of the night coming at us. They're trying to ram us. They're chasing me. I'm getting arrested three times before this thing is over with, representing myself, be eight charges, three arrests, um, obstruction of justice charges, one of them all, one of the first FERPA thing in history. But during that time, I learned what CPS could do. That's what makes us unique in being able to bring you this versus someone on the news or somebody that just looks it up and they find information, that's easy. But being able to relate to what it feels like to be a parent who's sitting, not only sitting in a chair by yourself, wondering where your daughter is, knowing you didn't do anything wrong. Nobody will give you any information. You're blocked from medical records, school records, psych records, mental evaluation records. You're blocked from the allegations that are coming at you. And I'm like, I didn't know this could happen. Before this was over, folks, they put me in Sampson County Detention Center on what was called a secret order. Now, I have no idea what that means, but I spent five months in jail with no bond, no sentence, no court order, and no due process, just sitting there. Nobody could get me out. 
and attorney Jesse Jones here who handles a lot of our stuff. And, and right now, as I'm talking, believe me, we're being threatened. I think her name is uh, Audrey Kemner. Is that her name? She is, she is threatening saying anything we're going to bring out is defamation. And what I would say to Audrey Kemner, Kemner is, you can kiss my Croydon Indian ass, Audrey, and I will put you and the rest of them in your place because whatever I say is going to be true. If it's truthful, it's not slander or liable. But if you have an issue, you need to contact attorney Jesse Jones, Lillington, North Carolina. He will he will either counter sue you or just shred you with a letter so you shut up or whatever. But if you threaten again, we'll just do the we'll just take action on you. So whatever we show is going to be real, folks. It's not going to be a joke. And, and we don't play around. We really don't. And I like to have fun, but we're not going to hear a bunch of shit over what we're going to do. We've been there. And the reason I'm telling you these things is, folks, you can go on, you can go on Facebook. You're going to have groups that claim to be able to do anything in the world. And then they'll tell you, oh, they can't do that. The two worst things I ever heard during a DSS case was they can't do that. And I'm like, well, they did. And they might can't constitutionally do it, but they did that. They did exactly that. And then they'll say, well, he must have done something. No, I didn't do anything. Didn't do anything. And, it, and you know what? In the end, I prevailed. It was not easy. This is the part that leads to what Neely is in right now and what a lot of you are. Orlena Wills, Melissa Deagle, Absug, uh, all these other ones. What happens is you don't want to listen to somebody, an attorney that can tell you something. Oh, that's a bar attorney. They'll scare you away. You don't want to listen to common sense and get ahead of the game. And that's what causes problems because you want some, a letter, an affidavit, a bloody thumbprint, whatever. You want it to be all over, and it's not going to happen that way. It just is not going to happen that way. What happens is when someone tells you the truth that you better buckle up, you better hold on, you better gear up. Because they're going to come at everything you've got. They're going to try you. And if you've got a weakness, you better get it fixed. People don't want to hear that. They want to hear it's going to be over with quick. And everything is going to be wiped away like a magic wand. And it ain't going to happen. That is not going to happen. We've had it happen really quick. Uh, Tessie Bear. You can look at Tessie Bear Miller on Facebook. Ask her. We have people who's, who have said, Becky Akins. Ask her. These are things that were over with in less than a week, less than a week. And it was done. Why? Because they listen, they didn't do stupid stuff. So we understand why these things happen and, and how they come about and why a parent would be vulnerable and they would feel like they had to do these things. But I'm telling you, just because you're under pressure, because you feel anxiety and the need to hurry it through. I want you to get done fast. I don't like it, but if you don't listen, you'll do some dumb stuff like we watched with, with Neely and the others. So with that being said, now we're gonna go right on into the Georgia event. This is where it kind of started with us. It was March 26, 2018. And I think, uh, I think that Maria's got some pictures. She'll be pulling up. And what happened here is as we look through these pictures, and in this picture, you can see there's Joyce the Voice. There's there right up front in the middle is Terry LaPointe of Medical mm -hmm. Kidnap. That went by too quick. So sorry. I can't tell you. That's okay. Uh, Elizabeth Byler, she's right there. As a matter of fact, that's a victim of Christopher Hallett that we can show later and show where he actually filed notices of appearance in a Pennsylvania court as though he was a lawyer and airline tickets were bought to get him there. And you know what? He dropped the ball. Then right behind them, you can see there is Byler's buddy and there's Ted Fogg. And I think, I don't know who that other guy there is. And then there's Randy and Melissa. So we move forward to the next picture. Okay, here's some pictures from inside the cabin. And you can see Melanie Lee Herring, Luciana, uh, Melissa, I think Brian Kenner is back there somewhere. But there's going to be one in here in a minute or a couple because this was a weekend. There's Ted Fogg drunk riding on Billy Elson's neck in the cabin. That's our cabin. And there's Neely. I want you to go over this picture right here for a minute. There's Neely. It's Don Ruffy on the left when you're looking at the picture as you're looking at it. 
There's Don Rufty. He's from here in North Carolina. He's a good guy, but Fran's got him hypnotized over there, so he just sold his nads. Then you've got Neely. Then you've got Ted Fogg. And then you have Lotus Justice. Now, here's the whole deal about this picture. When you look at Neely there and you look at Lotus Justice, <clears throat> and in the middle is Ted Fogg. Minutes after this photograph has been taken, Ted Fogg is drunk and he slaps Lotus to the floor. R Rufty was gone. It was only me. Uh, I think the only two males in there were myself and, and Ted Fogg. But d right after this picture, d Ted Fogg just slaps Lotus to the floor. And I'm like, what just happened? And they were arguing. Number one, the argument started. Let me tell you, it's going to be very relevant. The reason the argument first started was because Ted Fogg wanted Lotus Justice that you see there to admit that Kirk Pendergrass was a legal genius. That's right. And I'm going to tell you, Lotus Justice was having none of that. And then it, it escalated to the point where Lotus made him mad by telling him and Lotus is married to a woman. That's her business. But Lotus explained to Ted, and he's a pretty big boy. He's like 6'5", probably 225. And she explained to him that she was a bigger alpha male than Ted. He popped her right in the face, knocked her on the ground. I jump on him, get him around the throat, drag him out. And we have the videos of, of everything where we spoke there. But needless to say, after I drag him out, I take him down to where Brian Kenner, John Gentry, all of the others are. But we'll go over what happened with Neely right at this point. But the curious thing, and this is the craziest thing, before this picture, before this picture, what was happening here was, and it, it, this is why, and the only reason I'm telling you these things, folks, is because we didn't know these people. I never met these people in real life. We were just invited. We went. Hey, everything was good. There had been a good day you know, speaking, and we thought everything was cool. We're going to spend a night, and the next morning, was a, uh, it was a court case we were all going to. But anyway, right before this, what was happening, Neely and Lotus Justice were reading their Bibles. They were giving us a study in religion. They were going over all of these things, and they're having you know fun with the Bible and bringing up all of these things, and Everything was a good thing. And then next thing you know, there's a brawl, and it just sets out. So what's our next picture here, Maria? Okay, we got one in the middle there. That's Melanie Lee Herring. She was there. And she has spent time here at the house. We have seen her many places. We were with her in Tennessee. We rode to Tennessee with her and her mother. But here, that, this is another one who has lost their mind. I, we don't even know where she's at now. Last time she, we heard about her, she was somehow pretending that she was um, an, a Jewish princess like Esther. Okay. And Luciana there, she is Save Lily, the Save Lily. And, and it's Liliana. That's her granddaughter. She's a good person. She hasn't went off the rails, but we're going to show you who all does and what happens. We got another one here. Man, I can't even see that from there. That looks like something in Tennessee. Yeah, that's the inside John Gentry. He, and by the way, he's running for governor. We'll go over that in a minute. Let's go to the next one so I can see who's who. We're back to Georgia. Oh, that's me and Brian Kenner. He's just crazy. He's mentally ill, but he's okay. He hadn't went to prison. This is another one from Georgia. There's me laying in a hammock. And this is a very impressive picture right here, by the way. That's my watchdog wire press badge. Because I'm still writing. There it is right there, watchdog wire. And that's impressive. Now we're in Tennessee. And when we look around this room, there's some people I won't even remember who they, who they really were. But I believe that's Neely with her back to us. That's Brian Kenner. And then we've got others there. We can go to the next one. Okay, I'm all over there. And at this time, I had some kind of a thing growing in my throat, which had to be later 
taken out, and I could hardly, hardly call. But this is on John Gentry's back porch. Neely was there. This is at the rally that Connie Regally and Linda Lydia Hubble had. And it's Terry LaPointe is speaking there. It was at a little library that we went to. And Neely spoke there. This is me doing weekend at Bernie's. This is an interesting picture because I went all over John Gentry's house. I didn't drink. I don't drink. But I went all over his house. And I'm doing foolishness like this. The reason being is because it looks like weekend at Bernie's. So I went all over his house and did these pictures. I'm even wearing one of Ted Fogg t-shirts he gave me. But later, David Jose, who's rotten to the court, and of course, Francesca, who she just lost custody. I'd like to point that out. And David Jose never got his kids back, and he lied. But they're, 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 they, these two idiots came out and said, look, Randy is drunk. And, and you would have to be insane to look at that and think, Oh, he's drunk, but posing. He can't hold his head up, but he's posing. I mean, that's stupid. Okay, next. That's me right there. And that right there. And that's in John Gentry's kitchen. And just for the record, what I did there is I kind of pulled a Francesca motto, and I wanted to mark my ter territory. And John was running all around like a little firefly. And he was grinding his own wheat and making pizzas and pancakes for us but there were several places in his house where I just pissed in the corner to mark my territory I just wanted to make sure John knew that and when he's governor I'm gonna make sure he knows it. so then we're here and I don't remember that other big guy but that's Neely she's enjoying a beer I think at the crack of 10 30 in the morning go on to the next one foster gate that's when Brian was talking at the library in Tennessee we can go to the next one Oh, there's Lydia Hubble. Lydia Hubble, obviously, she's intrigued because I can't speak and I'm just sitting there. Here's a bunch of us here. I think that's probably where Gentry had just found Melanie Harry's thong in the upstairs bathroom and brought it down on a pencil. True story. It was blue. There's Lydia again admiring me. Oh, there's me and Connie regularly. This is when she wasn't mad at me. We're on the back deck. Is that Kathy? Brenda. Okay, we'll go to the next one. I, I have no Looks idea. Looks like a it. cabin, maybe the one you stayed at in Georgia. Now, it may have been something that John Gentry built out in his backyard. Yes. Okay. And this is back, it was the cabin, I'm just kidding. I think that's Ed Elliott back there. That's who that is. Ed Elliott is back there in the background to the if you're looking at the picture to the left of, and, and here's the deal. Why do I bring up Ed Elliott? Because Ed Elliott's all intertangled. There's Weekend at Bernie's. That's me. I'm liquored up. I think I did heroin right there, probably. According In a to couple, yeah, it looks like coffee to me, though. Yeah, but th this is Senator Nancy Schaefer's uh, tombstones. That's Melissa. We went out there. We had a thing. Joyce the Voice, she had a she had a whole book of songs that she played, and she, she, it was a really good time at the memorial before Ted and Lotus got into a man fight. Okay, we'll go next. Okay, this is John Gentry preparing uh, homemade pizza, and Joyce the Voice is telling me right here. This is, this is at the time when Joyce was trying to draw a logo for For the Children. And it was all screwed. It was all, it would look good, but you couldn't read it. It didn't read well. And I can draw and I was a draftsman. So I helped her to redo it. So it was separated enough that it looked like for the children and not just all interconnected. But this is at the same time. Yeah, there's Connie. And there's Terry LaPointe and Joyce the Voice and someone else. We can go to the next one. And Connie's an attorney, for those of you that don't know. I think that's the last of them. Okay, I, I, and the reason I wanted to do this part is because some of you don't know me. Some of you don't know me, and you think, well, my God, what gives him the right to even say anything about anybody? What, are they, what input can they give? We spent time with these people. We know these people, but more so, we also tried to help them, and we tried to warn them. And what happens inevitably, and this is, this is the funniest thing with me, 
but I watch things carefully and maybe I overthink them, but I see these same people, they will make a post on Facebook and then they don't get a million likes on it or whatever. I'm being shadow banned. And I'm thinking, I'm sure Mark Zuckerberg is really watching Joyce the Voice singing Stinky Cat at some made up congressional hearing that don't exist and thinking, you know, I really need to shadow man Joyce the Voice because otherwise Stinky Cat is going to take off and probably cause a national security risk or whatever. And then after they're complaining about being Facebook blocked and everything else, they will, if inevitably, if you have anybody just like Audrey Kemner or whatever her name is, she calls herself something else now, but the court records are Audrey Kemner. And believe me, her court records, they're awful. But uh, that's probably why she changed her name. Because a lot of people use fake names on here. My name is Randy Scott Davis. Okay. I don't use a fake name. But they, they will they will come at you they will attack you. They'll complain about their First Amendment right being violated by Facebook, whoever. And then what they'll do is if you do anything on their page, they just block you or they delete the comment. And what happens is let's say you had 500 people comment, 400 of them were saying, oh my God, Neely's going to probably kill somebody. And then 500 are saying, oh, no, Neely's the best thing in the world. Well, if you delete the 400, it looks like there's 100 people completely agreeable that she's the best thing in the world. That's another old separate issue, probably for a different show. But those that would grumble, and I have offered you an opportunity to come on here. And you're still welcome to come on here because we don't want to give a one-sided here's our view and we haven't presented all the evidence yet told you when we're going to do that and we're about to but we wanted to make sure that if any of you wanted to call me a liar or call anybody a liar the one thing that people usually do is they say i don't like how he goes about it doesn't matter if you like how i go about it we're telling the truth and that's the only thing that matters you see I really don't care how a person tells me. I like it blunt, quick, to the point. Don't, don't give me a long, drawn-out speech. Just tell me straight up, hey, Randy, that's stupid. That will put you in jail. Here's where it puts someone else in jail. And I can see no possible upside to what you're doing. Then we're done. I'm like, oh. And I'm going to look at the facts. But these people don't want you to have facts. And that's just how it is. They want to have something secret. Hallett, Eclos, Gentry, Francesca, all of them want to always have something secret. And they will hide. And I'm not talking about, you know, if you know that, that I've got a whatever, I got a problem being late or I'm not doing something right or A, hey, even if I went out and I wrecked a car and you just didn't put that all over Facebook, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying these people will hide serious things you have done in your past and then they will promote you if you're their friend. But if you're their friend, they will protect you no matter what. Even if you're destroying their other friends because they didn't tell you the truth. And the deal with us is, and I've said it a hundred times, if it were my own brother and he was doing something destructive and had things hanging over and that was going to hurt others, right is right and wrong is wrong. And I'm going to call it out and not let you go down the wrong path. That's not what they did. And, and Maria, I think we're now at that point in time where we can bring up um, Neely's mug shots just to get a quick you know look at it folks they're on the watchman page but the other night we knew a lot of stuff but we never really dug into it because Neely was never Neely was never out there as far as I could see trying to destroy other families not her personally now Francesca David Jose they were but as you look through these, and you're welcome, we're not going to spend a lot of time here. We're just going to kind of click through them and let you see. And you're going to see a pattern. I mean, this is not one or two. This is a woman who has just turned 33 years old this week. 
33. That's only 15 years of being able to get mug shots. And in 15 years, Neely has got a lot of mug shots. Now, Lydia Hubble said earlier, well, that does not mean that she murdered someone. No, it doesn't. And having a lot of mug shots doesn't mean that she's guilty of a lot of crimes. It doesn't. Even, even if you had, I don't know, 30 mug shots like this, it really is not a big deal as far as being guilty. But let me just tell you something. If you're going, if you're going for a job interview to be an agent of E-Clause, don't you think this should be maybe a consideration? You should think, well, you know, gee, maybe. And I don't know how many, maybe the people that are saying, well, mugshots don't mean anything. Maybe they're, yeah, maybe they have a lot of mugshots themselves. And maybe they don't like it that they have mugshots. So then everybody else that has mugshots is okay. So I'm going to say that mugshots don't make you guilty of anything. They don't. Affidavits don't make you guilty of anything when it combined with a warrant. Doesn't, doesn't really mean it. But I can tell you one thing. If you're 33 years old and you have 20 to 30 mug shots that are found in 10 minutes, there's something wrong. And I think Maria is probably going to pull up some orders at this point. And we're going to go over a little bit of what's wrong. You know, some of this were provided by attorney. Um, some of this, Maria found it. Some of it can't be found any other way other than the way we got it, including information we're going to bring up a little bit later out of the state of Florida involving the attorney general's office, the or the federal the federal attorney's office, I'm sorry, and the the bar. We're going to bring that up a little bit later. But there's a, a certain set of orders which came to us. And this one, God, I got to put my glasses on here, Maria. State of South Carolina. This is her custody order. Yeah. Can you, I, because either I can take away Melissa's tablet and read the highlights of this thing. And believe me, folks, we have redacted. Maria has spent a lot of time in order to redact the children's well, names. The, yes. I've read you, you, you can tell them your name, deal here. the child's name and the father's name. But this addresses in general, in part, a big part of it is Sue's uh, Neely and her mother. And it just basically goes on about the case and it being, you know, that plaintiff filed to do a change of a uh, change of custody. Uh, there was already a, an, a custody order, and I believe this was in result of the episode where Neely kidnapped this child. Right. And this is, the, uh, uh, let everybody know what's going on here, because this is not, this is not Neely's twin. This is an older daughter who's now 12 years old. Okay. And even recently Neely has tried to make contact with this child and I don't know do you see Karen in there Karen was yes come in actually uh she is let me go ahead and uh I um let me unshare this for just a minute so I can go in and allow her to talk if Karen will unmute if she unmutes her phone there we go all right now, let me go ahead and share the screen. All right. And folks, this is this is going to be someone who helps us with situations. This is there's going to be some out there. Go, oh, my God, that's a GAL attorney. That's a BAR attorney. I don't know any other way to understand this stuff except to go to someone who actually fights to get kids home. And Karen brings kids home. Now, David Jose, he, he's pistol whipped his daughter and did bloody thumbprint affidavits, and he's going to yell and scream, oh, the bar, the bar attorney. But David Jose's advice and his direction is why uh, you end up with tragedy and why he's never seen his kids and why he's lying about having an outside tribunal and a 
court order to have his kids back. When his kids have been adopted, he beat them. He beat his stepdaughter with a pistol. He's not seeing anybody. So he would grumble about this and they've attacked Karen. But Karen is capable of explaining this to you. So I'm going to mute myself and let her do that. All right. Well, basically where we're at is the fact finding and it's the pursuit of the temporary order. Um, and it's basically saying it's in the best interest of the minor child that plaintiff shall have permanent full legal physical custody of the minor child. They find hey, that the defendant. Maria, yeah. Hey, Maria, I think we need to back up so that people understand this okay. is, and I know that Randy said this, but this is a completely different. This is not the twins. This is not the children that were in the care, custody, and control of Neely's mother. This is a previous case wherein the paternal father of this child, Neely was the mother, um, the paternal father's mother, the paternal grandmother was in court fighting for this child. <clears throat> she eventually got this child. This is the court order after that case, this was not the case with the twins. This is a separate child. It is the paternal grandmother who was fighting actually both Neely and her mother. So she was fighting the mother and the maternal grandmother for this child. And it's very interesting to see what the court had to say about Neely and her mother. Right, do you want me to just go to the fact finding? Sure. Okay. Because basically, really, that's where it sums it up with what we finding as a fact of conclusion of law. Um, and it's really, it says a lot about both her and uh, both Neely and her mother. And here's, where is it? Um, you should be able to go down to the very bottom. Well, just the, to all of this oh, is just well, there's, basically, there's a lot here talks about the best interest of the physical custody because um, the following events, making repeated false allegations right. of sexual abuse to the child by the defendant, both in the state of South Carolina on multiple occasions during the pendency of this action in the state of Florida, honor about April, blah, 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 you know, tra traumatic physical injury because of the examinations, her admission to orchestration of filing a false report of child abuse, of, child against the plaintiff and defendant yeah, which and I, think I actually have that shot. report right huh? i think we saw one of the mugshot pictures was for that crime that she right and i actually have i we actually have that report as well as the hand what neely had the she wrote out and told him what to tell 911 we have that evidence uh yeah, so let me let me go over this maria because I think of it as people who don't understand and how to make right. them understand. And here is the, here's what has happened here. And this is from speaking with, and believe me right now, the attorney for the paternal grandmother is in the comments battling with people who are calling her a child trafficker, which is insane. Yeah, insane. and let me just say, they call us all. If you hear one of these people call an attorney, because let me tell you something, there's not any other kind except for a bar attorney. Another kind yeah. doesn't exist. And when they hear, they call us child traffickers. Um, I've even been accused of eating children. I mean, these people are insane. So anyway, go ahead, Randy. Yeah, and what this attorney had let me know is, and by reading this, and folks, we'll put these up, on the watchman yeah. it's on facebook on the watchman we're going to put everything up there because what's going to happen is there's a tremendous amount of information you're about to see and it's going to be some of it very ugly we don't want to dwell on it but we want to leave it where you can go back and look at it because most people it you know when we found out this has happened we were in no hurry to jump into it like some we're glad they did they brought awareness but our stance has already, I mean, always been, we'd rather be accurate than fast. We don't care if we're first. We want to be known that we did it right. And we actually did things the correct way. But talking with the attorney involved here, this was such a hideous thing. And just, just keep in mind, this attorney, what did she do for her client, which is the grandmother? Now, those of you out there that are yelling, 
oh, this attorney is child trafficking. Well, then what, what do you say to, to, to Luciana? Luciana is trying to get custody of her granddaughter, complete custody from the mother. Now, I'm going to tell you, you can't have it both ways. And I do hate hypocrisy, something bad. So if Luciana gets custody of Liliana, her granddaughter, from the biological mother, does that mean Luciana, the grandmother, is child trafficking? Because don't be stupid. Those of you, and I'm going to be honest with you, what I usually see whenever I see this kind of garbage, it's somebody who lost. They're not like me. I can produce a court order where my daughter was returned in 24 hours. Most of you have lost and then you switch over to idiots and you switch over to stupid stuff where people are eating babies or doing their child trafficking you can't child traffic a child to the grandmother after the mother is pulled what we're about to show you if you can stand and i'll bring you all in here no need to argue with the other attorney i'll bring the asses in here i don't care who you are my friends or otherwise i'll bring you in here and let you defend and let you go on video or audio and let you defend how after we present this, you would have given that child or the other two kids nearly had how you wouldn't have given them to somebody else. And you would have placed them with Neely after you see the evidence, because you understand on Facebook, you hear a story. Now, what matters in court is the case and the evidence. What happens in a story, Facebook is an echo chamber where you join a group and everybody in it tells you how terrible it is and how the system's killing everybody, eating babies, and how you're right, girl, and you can win in court. You do this, you bloody thumbprint, you just no show, you go kidnap your children, you just run with them. And you know what? They're not there when you go to jail. And they're not there when you're on that witness stand all gummed up and can't open up your mouth because you were a badass all over Facebook whenever you had the peanut gallery with you. And I hate to be brutal, but look, that's where we are. That's where we are. There's a dead man and a woman that'll probably never get out of jail. Tonight, what's going on with Neely? Y'all don't understand this. You don't understand this, but let me explain something. Neely is in a cell that is an isolation cell on a mental health watch, suicide watch. What that means is, just like with Danielle Hatcher when she pooped in her hand and wrote on the wall here in North Carolina, Lee County, what this means is that Neely is wearing what's called a turtle suit. Now, let me just tell y'all something, because I want to paint a picture, because all y'all talking about, oh, I do this and I do that, and I would take them out, and I would be a badass. Well, when you end up in that little bitty room, it's not like the other jail cell. It's not like the other cell blocks. When they put me in jail, I was in B-112. Best thing I ever heard after five months after Jesse Jones filed a writ of habeas and I got out without a trial was, Davis, roll your shit. Davis, roll your shit. And that meant to roll up your little uh, your little bed mat. And, and what a turtle suit is, some of these places, it's an actual suit, but it basically is like a toga with a hole in the middle where it goes over your head and then it comes all the way around your body and you have on no clothes whatsoever. This jail cell has no bunks. It doesn't have the stainless steel toilet over there with the with the uh, place where you can get water to make your ramen noodles. The only thing, and I have my video off, but the only thing that you get in there is there's a hole in the floor and you have to squat down and pee. You don't get, you don't get nothing. You don't get your ramen noodles. You don't get to read a book. You don't get phone calls. You don't get visitors. Nobody's going to talk to you. And that's where Neely sits tonight. While y'all are thinking, oh my God, some of you are dead set against her. Some of you are, we need to free Neely. We need to raise bond and get her out. You know what? And some of you, some of you, and I've talked to many, raised bond before because John Gentry lied about Neely and raised bond on her and, and paid 10 grand. And she got out and now she's killed a man. So I'm not telling you that others should feel guilty, but I'm telling you John Gentry should. 
Now back to this court order. I'm going to take well, myself back second, over there. Randy, what I want to yeah. say about that is this: they, I don't think they have to worry about it this time because I don't think there's going to be a um, bond this time. See, that's what right. happens when you're out when you probably shouldn't have been to begin with because she had already. This would have been a habitual felony act in Kentucky when she kidnapped the twins. She should have been no bonded then, and he would still be alive. But see, y'all would be screaming, oh, no, free Neely. But see, there's a reason our judicial system does the things they do. And I'm glad you go brought ahead. it up. Before we, go, before we go into the order, I want to handle something right here, too, Karen. <clears throat> there, there are people, and I'm telling you, David Strait said it to people. Francesca has said it to people. Others have said it to people. I've even been asked, hey, what, can you help me? I want to hide a child. I know Cheyenne, and 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 for those of y'all don't know, you can Google "help me get back to my dad." Help me get back to my dad, Cheyenne David. You're gonna see a video there with a hundred and some thousand views. She got in like three days while I was in jail because she, there was no court order, there was no case, but they were trying to hem us up and get us, and we weren't gonna have that. I was in jail when she made it. But everybody looked at it like, oh, they were on the run. We were not hiding anything. We just weren't going to get hemmed up by people with no court order because these people had killed my cat and dog. There's a lot of crazy stuff. But you can't uh, disobey a court order and not be in trouble. And here's what these people say. And Karen, you're an attorney. I'm going to ask you to handle the, the way it is because they'll say to a mother, and some have told me this this week, they will look straight at a mother or on the phone and they'll say, you should just kidnap. You should just go get, just go pick them up and take off. And they, they, they'll say, what? I'll go to jail if I do that. Oh, no, you won't go to jail. How can a, how can a biological parent kidnap their own child? So can you tell us, Karen, how a biological parent can or can't kidnap their own child? I can, Randy, but the issue is this. I really am appalled that I even have to explain that. Um, there are custody orders. And just because somebody births a child does not make them necessarily the person that is intended to raise that child. Our courts are set up where they also protect children. And believe it or not, people, there are some parents both male and female, fathers and mothers, the mother births the child, the father's sperm is used. They are not property. You do not have the right to neglect emotionally, physically, or any other thing like that to a child. So if a court has entered a custody order and you take that child against that order, you are kidnapping under the law. If you don't like it, your remedy is to stay in court and fight it. Or else you do what these people say and you will go to jail. Period. Absolutely. And let me just say to y'all, I want you to put yourself in the position. And, and some of you have never won anything. And I mean, you're not seeing your kids. The father's got them or the mother's got them. But if, if you had a court order, that your kids not leave the state, that they, they were 100% soul in your custody. And some of you went, women that are grumbling right now about this saying she can't kidnap her own child. You would put your husband, your ex-husband, the baby's father, you'd put them underneath the prison if they violated one of your court orders. Some of you will raise pure hell if they don't have them back on time. Some of you get mad every weekend whenever they have, oh my God, he's sexually abusing, he's trafficking my child on his weekend visit. Some of you are hypocrites. Some of you are straight up liars. Some of you are bad. There's a lot of you that are good. Some of you are mad because we don't help some of you for that very reason. And until you're able to get honest with yourself and tell the truth about a situation, and until you can understand that if there's a mother, let's say Dana Williams, for example, because me and Hallett had a falling out about that that's going to come up in a little bit. Let's say that me and Maria were contacted, and the father is from Croatia, and Dana was contacting us because Fran had screwed her case up. And we had five days 
to help her to get a court order that this man could not, and he had already got passports, passport. We had five days to make sure that that man didn't put them on an airliner and fly them out to the country of Croatia. Now, if he had, what would y'all have said? Well, that Croatian man can certainly not kidnap his children. No, you'd have been all up in arms and wanting to protest and what are that, be loud and jump all that. And we're serving notice and we're serving judges. We're arresting judges. We're doing all that. You'd have been raising pure hell if that man had took those kids and went out of the country. You can't have it both ways, folks. You cannot have it both ways. This, what Neely did, and we're going to show you even more. And I'm not doing it to change your mind because I don't expect y'all to change your mind. The ones I'm talking to are people that are not stupid, people who haven't done this stupid stuff. And hopefully we're talking to people that don't even know this is an issue. People that would have been like me before it happened to me. People that would have been like Melissa before it happened to her. People that would have been normal, in other words, and they don't deal with this every day. They're not all wrapped up in it. But before you start making these tribes and you just support whoever's in your tribe, no matter what they're doing, you need to think and ask yourself, am I being smart? Is it wise to just overlook the craziness? Is it wise? Is it wise to go with these people and support them no matter what? Is it wise to be on Facebook and tell them, oh, yeah, you go, girl, when you know you're not going to be there with them in court? Most of y'all never even been in court with your own case. Sarah Carter been bitching all week. She never even went to her own. Jose didn't go to her own. But they'll grumble at you when you go to other people to help them and don't charge anything. That's how insane some of this is. But let's go back to the court order. And I felt like we should handle that. That wasn't even on the agenda, but I don't care. And so I, just said, want I am to, Batman. I have a question for Karen. I just would like for her to clarify uh, something that I have. Um. So on June 11, 2014, Neely was actually charged in South Carolina for custodial interference concerning um, her oldest child. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to clarify. Melissa, yes. She, it's, this is yes. what that court order, and you will see in this court order where the findings of fact, she took that child from an elementary school um, it wasn't the first time she had gone against a custodial, cause an order and taken the child. And yeah. then she turned right around, got involved with these people, did it with the twins. And then now there she sits in a jail cell. And, and Karen, yeah. not to interrupt yeah. you, but here's another thing that M Melissa just saw in the comments, the attorney for the paternal grandmother of the eldest child she said she just messaged in there that she had forgotten. I guess it maybe uh, jogged her memory when we're talking about Dana Williams. But she right. said she had forgotten that the Neely had actually uh, attempted to obtain a passport and take the oldest child out of the country. Right. So is it, is it right. different when it's Neely, folks? Don't be silly. It's not different just because she's on your team. And we're going to go into some more to have a back. Well, and I think that order. I think that we have to make sure everybody understands something has occurred that makes the court interfere to enter a custodial order. Something had happened. And I think in this case, in Neely's case, it was her coming in contact with law enforcement over and over and over again and her behavior. And so the court intervenes to protect the child. Now the grandmother has to fight not only her, but also the, her mother the maternal grandmother just to keep this child safe then fast forward she goes and she has twins and it's the same situation and she ends up kidnapping those twins while you have people like chris hallett kirk pendergrass all of these people on the internet gaslighting this behavior yeah the interesting and part is, is this is persistent felony offender charges here in Kentucky. I just wanted to clarify that for the viewers out there because this is getting a little confusing. There's so much to this case. Um, and right. I know Randy's got a lot of ground to cover. So yes, but I think if Go you start with the timeline, the timeline is this is the first. Absolutely. This is the first child. This yes. is the paternal grandmother. 
that had custody of this child and you will see the same behavior by Neely. Yeah, and there's no doubt that these quote unquote people that we know are now you know, sovereign citizens knew this behavior, but yet they continued to egg on. She ended up kidnapping the twins after this. And, and I then have a now we've got a murder. Too, but go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. All right, so if you look here at this court order, I mean, they're talking about the whole bit with the kidnapping here. And then it's multiple events of violence and assault by the defendant against Susan Blanchard in front of children, minor children. And apparently welfare services was involved in their case yeah. uh, with her multiple events of police and child welfare service involvement with defendant Neely Blanchard on allegations of violence, threats, assault, battery, theft, drugs, in the state of Florida, while this matter was pending, including but not limited to a 911 call to the Jackson Sheriff's Office on December 8, 2012, containing allegations of theft. Then here it is, uh, St. John's County Sheriff's Office, uh, allegations of violence, uh, <clears throat> and then theft of medication and jewelry, all, you know, and then an assault and battery on the defendant, Susan Blanchard, which we have that report um she was okay you know. i just want to make a point right here maria i want to ask everybody on facebook that has followed neely and followed her you know this i need my children back i've been wronged did she come out and give this information no but you have to understand courts have this information when you say courts have done this mother wrong courts have done you're only hearing what she's telling you this is a court order that shows a pattern of this behavior by Neely. Go ahead. Well, and also apparent, she's also continually relocated herself in different states every time CPS got involved, child welfare services by law enforcement and attempt to thwart any investigation on, into the welfare of her children and those children present during those reported incidents. Um, her you know, she just complete disregard for court orders and, you know, her condition of bond, that her bond was revoked and her willful disregard to the court of the general sessions, her admitted to past drug use. Which the again, session. Maria, let me say the pattern, her, her continuous disregard for court orders, bond, she was on out on bail in Kentucky when she was down in Pensacola, Florida, and then ended up allegedly murdering Chris Hallett. Do, does everyone see the pattern? This behavior didn't happen overnight. This was back in 2012, 2013, when there are court documents documenting this behavior. And here's a key part right here that kind of plays into work what happened to Chris Hallett, her threats to shoot her mother in the head and her threats to kill anyone who tried to take her children away from her. What did she think Hallett was doing? According to the police report, she thought he was working with the government to keep her children away from her. What did she do? She shot him or allegedly shot him. I mean, that's key. This is yes, a and that, of, and of course, of course, those are her delusions. But unfortunately, Chris Hallett was scamming her. Right. But her she delusions was. took her to he's a government agent. He's this. He's that. It's all paranoid delusions. She apparently has not financially supported her child during this. All of this unstable lifestyle, uh, moving multiple residents. I mean, she just her life is just a mess. And then here we have the uh, the questionable lifestyle and cons consorting with known criminals and enlisting the aid of known criminals to break the law on her behalf. Wow. That I believe has to do with that false report. Yeah. 